hello and welcome back to my channel this video is about principles of costing and today we're going to talk about inventory valuation the inventory here is the inventory of the raw materials we are going to find out the cost of raw materials from the storage that will be issued to the production if you have already finished your textbooks you already know that we have three methods of pricing the cost of issue of these raw materials we have FIFO, LIFO and ABCO FIFO is first in first out LIFO is last in first out and ABCO is the weighted average or average cost now let's take a look at our example inventory record this inventory record only pertains to one raw material and it shows the movement of that raw material so let's analyze this inventory record we have receipt side and issues side on the 1st of may we have received a new stock of raw materials so it is recorded to the receipt side same on the 5th of may we have received another new stock of raw materials so it's recorded to the receipt side we don't have the price per kilo here but we will use this column later for now we can expect that the price varies every time we made a purchase of raw materials so this price per kilo here varies on the 15th of may we can see record in the issue side this is the quantity of the raw materials that we have issued or given to the production but we don't know the cost yet then on the 28th of may we have received a new stock of raw materials so it was recorded on the receipt side next we are going to find out the cost of issue on the 15th of may and the closing inventory as at the 31st of may using three different methods of inventory valuation so we have here the tables for fifo lifo and avco and these are the same inventory record here and to find out the answers to this table we will use these three tables first is fifo so we are going to find out the cost of issue on the 15th of may so from the name itself first in first out the first stock that came in should be the first stock to go out since first of may is the first one we will start from here we have 150 kilos here so all of this 150 kilo will be included in the issue therefore the cost is 1500 so let's mark them we need 270 kilos so the remaining is 270 minus 150 equals 120 kilos so from 5th of may we will only get the 120 kilos of this 200 kilos so let's split them up then let's split the cost as well and this is the time that we need the price per kilo so let's calculate let's get the cost and let's divide it by the number of kilos and we got 12 so this is the price per kilo let's now calculate the cost of 120 kilo it's 120 times 12 equals 1440 and the cost of 80 kilos is 80 times 12 equals 960 the total of this two is still equal to 2400 because we just split them up 
Now let's mark only the kilos and the cost that we need. Then let's add this two cost, 1,500 plus 1,440. And our cost of issue is 2,940. Then let's calculate the closing inventory. This 28th of May issue should be included. Let's add the remaining cost which is 960 plus 3750 and we got 4710 and this is our closing inventory. Don't forget to double check this amount by adding all the cost of receipts and deducting the cost of issue and we should get the same amount. Next, let's move on to LIFO. This is the same inventory record. On the 15th of May, we have issued 270 kilos. So we are going to find out the cost using LIFO method. So let's imagine today is the 15th of May. And since 5th of May is the last stock that came in as of today, we will issue this one first. We need 270 kilos and we have 200 kilos here. So all of this will be issued. Therefore, the cost is 2,400. So let's mark them. The second to the last stock is the 1st of May and we only need the remaining 70 kilos of this 150 kilos so let's split this up let's split the cost as well and to do that we need to get the price per kilo let's calculate 1500 is the cost let's divide it by 150 kilos and our price per kilo is 10 Let's get the cost of 70 kilos, which is 70 times 10 equals 700. And the 80 kilos, which is 80 times 10 equals 800. The total of these two should still be equal to 1,500 because we just split them up. Then let's mark only the kilos and the cost that we need. Then let's add 700 plus 2,400 equals 3,100 and this is the cost of issue. Then let's calculate the closing inventory. This 28th of May will be included in the calculation. The remaining 800 plus 3,750 equals 4,550 and this is the closing inventory. Again, double check the closing inventory by adding all the cost of receipts and deducting the cost of issue and we should get the same amount. Next, let's move on to our last method, which is AVCO. Let's find out the cost of issue of this 270 kilos on the 15th of May using AVCO method. With this method, the cost of issue is based on the average cost of these two receipts. First, let's get the total of the kilos, which is 150 plus 200 and we have 350 kilos then let's get the total of the cost which is 1500 plus 2400 we have a total of 3900 so we only need 270 kilos of this 350 kilos so let's split them up
then let's split the cost as well and to do that we need to get the price per kilo so let's calculate 3,900, let's divide it by 350 kilos, and this is our price per kilo. Let's get the cost of 270 kilos using this price, so let's multiply it to 270 kilos. And we got 3,008.57. Then let's get the cost of the remaining 80 kilos by multiplying it to the same price per kilo. Let's get the price per kilo first, which is 3,900 divided by 350 kilos. Then let's multiply it to 80 kilos. And we got 891.43. So the total of these two is still equal to 3,900 because we just split them up. Then let's mark only the kilos and the cost that we need. So 3,008.57 is our cost of issue. For the closing inventory, this 28th of May issue will be included in the calculation. The remaining 891.43 plus 3750 equals 4641.43 is our closing inventory. Again, double check by adding all the cost of receipts and deducting the cost of issue and we should get the same amount. Some notes to remember in the actual exam, the number of decimal places required is always given. In this example, I just rounded off into two decimal places. Also, you may have noticed that when I calculated the price per kilo, I did not round it off yet, but instead I multiply it straight away to 270 kilos and to 80 kilos. Then I round off the final answer to two decimal places. If we round off the price per kilo into two decimal places, then multiply it to 270 kilos and 80 kilos, then we will get a different answer. So remember to round off only on your final answer. And that's it for today's video. I hope you find it useful. If you want to watch more videos like this, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.